Hey, and welcome to another wonderful session of the Data Science Nigeria Artificial Intelligence um, Virtual Bootcamp. Today we'll be taking a look at building financial models from scratch with Tumisha Johnson. It promises to be a very wonderful session, so just stay calm and learn. Um, before I introduce the facilitator for today, I would like to walk you through what we do at Data Science Nigeria. At Data Science Nigeria, we are the biggest artificial intelligence learning platform in, on the continent uh, with a vision to build world-class artificial intelligence knowledge research and innovation ecosystem that delivers high impact and transformational research, business use applications, AI for startups, employability, and social good use case. So that in 10 years, Nigeria will become one of the top 10 AI talent knowledge destinations um, in the world. And um, we're saying that we would have 20% GDP multiplier effect uh, on the nation. So in, in summary, 1 billion AI talent in 10 years. So quickly, let's look at how we support um, data science uh, professionals across the continent. Uh, we've become a go -to, the go-to company or organization when it comes to corporate trainings in, uh, in Nigeria. We've trained both international and local organizations um, across the continent. You could look at some of them. We have Shell, we have Nigerian Army. So we've become a very, very good organization with a lot of experience in training uh, corporate organizations and businesses. Also, we run um, executive classes, uh, one artificial intelligence classes for executives, for business owners and top level executives on how they can leverage artificial intelligence to increase productivity and drive revenue in their, in their various organizations. Um, there's a picture from one of our um, uh, in demand classes um, called Business Analytics and Intro to Data Science for Professionals where we give where it's, it's an answer session, a practical answer session on the applications of um, data science and artificial intelligence to solve business problems. So for you to get more information about our training, you can just view, um, go to the site uh, that is displayed here for more information. So we are also on board to run the biggest AI learning platform on the continent and across campuses and cities. Um, Via online means offline project based and content development. These are pictures of some of our initiatives where we reach out to democratize artificial intelligence knowledge across um, different locations in Nigeria. We are also opportune to run the uh, biggest data science Nigeria bootcamp um, on the continent, uh, where we get the very, very best instructors and experts across the world to come teach and mentor. Uh, young people at the bootcamp, so the very best uh, young data scientists that we have in Nigeria. We have, uh, we have them gathered free, uh, all expense paid, five day residential bootcamp. Uh, at, at this bootcamp, all of the attendees, the past one, have access to wonderful opportunities such as scholarships, access to projects, uh, to work on projects, um, uh, job opportunities, and so much more. Um, also, we uh, we don't leave our kids out, uh, and our young ones they are very very key a key part of our initiatives. We reach out to young people to uh, talk about artificial intelligence and learn even at the very very young age uh, about artificial intelligence and how it's applied and robotics and so on. So you can see some pictures of them also learning. Apart from that, we also bring inspiring figures, top world class um, experts to come talk to our participants and students, just to inspire them to become workers and great also at data science Nigeria, uh, at, at, at data science and artificial intelligence. So before we go to the class, let us watch a video from attendees of our past professional training. Okay, so I chose data science because, I mean, it's the future. The vision of DSN, I identify with it. I mean, it's something I can relate with, the vision of wanting to create um, a hub for data scientists in West Africa. I mean, it's something that is highly needed. Okay, so far so good has been a wonderful one. I was able to learn um, the use of data to interpret data to predict the future, definitely. My big take home is probably um, sentiment analysis and then um, the use of big ML. Today we did data visualization, dealt extensively with um, Power BI. There's a whole lot I can do with it. Things that we've been trying to analyze, I can now visualize it and it will make more sense to my audience. 
Big ML majorly, it has been my own major takeaway and the, the lectures were so broken down such that anybody can understand it. So what um, Sharon told me is lesser than what I even experienced there. Um, the facilitators, they took us like children. It was like a dummy taking the course. Tell everybody I, I, I come in contact with, especially young people in school right now, uh, jobs as we know it will no longer exist. So you should get trained you know, in one of the technical skills. It could be data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. That is the future. So for me, DSN, the vision is something that everyone, every forward-looking Nigerian should identify with. I heard about data science from a friend who also just completed a program with you guys and you really had a very good experience. So that I was encouraged as I was starting my journey in data analysis, so I was encouraged to come and today was eye-opening. So far so good it has been a wonderful one. I was able to learn um, the use of data to interpret data to predict the future definitely and also I was able to you know understand the essence of the data the raw data we have currently and I would definitely encourage anyone to come here to learn about them. You can download our annual report at the link shared here. Thank you very much so you can have all the information about Data Science Nigeria is our website email and, and so on. So let us welcome our speaker for today. So introduction, Tumishi Johnson is a chartered accountant and expert um, with solid experience in financial management and grant management in private and development organization. He has functional experiences that span financial management, grant management, process management, audit and financial modeling. He is a growing data scientist with experience in big ML, Power BI and Orange and currently works as the finance and grant manager yeah, that's science now. You're going to be taking us on how to build financial model from scratch. You're going to enjoy the class, so stay tuned and have fun. Good evening. Today we'll be learning how to build financial model from scratch using Microsoft Excel. It's a very interesting one. And um, at the end of this class, you would be able to apply structural approach to financial modeling. We would know the hallmark of good financial modeling. You'll be able to forecast income statements from operating revenue. You'll be able to forecast financial position and you'll be able to forecast statement of cash flow. Let's start. Applying structural approach to financial modeling. But before we go there, what is a model? A model is a theoretical description that can help you understand how a system or process works or how it might work. Now what is business model? A business model is a description of how your business makes money. It is an explanation of how you deliver value to your customers at an appropriate cost. So a business model is describing how your company will be able to make profit or satisfy the customers. So when you are building a business plan, you have your business model, you should know when to penetrate, when to diversify, when to introduce products, and country or state to take your product based on your business plan. So for every business model, there must be a financial model. So a financial model is a process of creating a summary of a company's expenses and earnings and end it in the form of a spreadsheet that can be used to calculate the impact of a future event or decision. Remember, the purpose of financial modeling is for decision making and to calculate a future impact today. Basically, a financial model will help you to understand what's your business or how your business will be doing in the next five years today. So it will help you to take certain steps to achieving the objective of your financial model. Before we go into the practical, let us look at how 
we can structure our model. The most important thing is understanding what your input, your process, and of course, your output. What is input here? Inputs is simply understanding all the inputs based on the characteristics of your business. For example, you are into buying and selling. Now you know that in your model you should have revenue, in your model you should have cost of goods sold, in your model you should have gross profit, in your model you should have your gross profit margin, in your model you should have selling, buying, selling and distribution expenses, in your model you should have operating expenses, in your model you should have earnings before interest and tax, finance cost, earnings before tax, and based on the nature of your business. So you have to clearly identify your input and make it easy to use, easy to understand, and easy to update. What is your process? Process of input to output should be transparent. Use formatting, calculate figures that will go to the output. So I would just say that your processing is your assumptions, is the calculations of your assumptions. So let me tell you something. Financial model is built on assumptions. And that is why financial model is not just for an accountant. Everybody in an organization is involved in building financial modeling. For example, you need to discuss with your sales guy, guys. What is your five years plan, sales guys? You will say, oh, every year we'll be increasing our sales by 50%. Good assumptions. You have to build your model on that assumptions. You have to discuss with your business developer, um, BDM. Oh, what's your business plan? Oh, in 2019 or in 2023, we're going to build a different operating system. We're going to build a different stream of income. You have to include that in your assumptions to build your financial model and your cost appropriately. Then, of course, your output is your input plus process, then you get your output. Your output basically is the outlook of your financial model. And this is what investors or CEOs or business owners use to make decisions. All mark of good financial modeling. For you to be a financial model, number one, you have to be clear about your business problem or your business itself. What are you trying to solve? What is the nature of your business? Once you understand this, then you inculcate your understanding into your financial model. You have to think about all input and output so you don't miss anything out. Because your input is what determines your output. Then you have to plan your model structure. You protect the integrity of your data. You can use data validation to do that. We'll see that in this video. Then you can also consider using test data to check your model if it's going to work as expected. So very shortly, we are going to build a financial model from the scratch. Thank you. All right. We are going to build a financial model from the scratch. So this is my Excel sheet. I have named my sheets, table of contents, organization information, assumptions, income statements, financial position, cash flow statements. Let me give you a, a brief introduction about my organization. We are into, this is an imaginary organization. We are into trainings. So we train people every year. That's my that is what we do. So this, you might be surprised at, oh, why do I have some figures already in my Excel? I thought that we are building this is from the scratch. Yes, we are building from the scratch. However, based on my organization information, I have been existing since 2017. And my assumption is this is 2019. So I am building my model from 2019 to 20, from 2020 to 2025. 
So the first thing you need to know in your financial model is your historical cost, the history of what you have been doing. So based on history, my 2017, 2018, 2019, these are the numbers of people I trained every year. And of course, this is the rate I train them. It's a fixed rate. For any training you are coming for, it is just 200,000. It's my business model. All right. So this is my income statement based on history 2017, 2018, 2019. Financial position 2017, excuse me, 2018, 2019. So since we are predicting to 2025, you can just drag this to 2025. Yep. This is my cash flow. All right. So 2025. So all these are my historical figures. I, I, I got them from what I've been doing before. So it can be, oh my God, I'm just starting my organization. How do I develop this historical cost? All these things, you can still assume them based on what you think or what your business plan is. It is all assumptions. Or they are all assumptions. All right. So let's begin to put, or let's begin to impute our processes and our assumptions. One secret you need to understand why learning this is, put a smile on your face, keep watching, pay attention. So let us make our assumptions. If I was able to train in quarter one, 2017, 100, 2018, 150, 2019, 170. Then what will I be able to train in 2020? What will be the number of students I will be training in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025? So what I do is, growth rate. Then I can say 2018, 2019. For you to find your growth rate, it's 2018 over 2019 into brackets minus one. Then for my 2019 to plus so this over this. Minus one. So I'll be using my average rate. So I can just say the average equals to average. Average of this will be my basis of assumption. Then you can drag this down to quarter four. Drag this down to quarter four. Then this is my decision to then drag this down to the floor. Sorry. Control B to go. So I know that in 2020, to be this, multiply by this. Plus one. So this is it. So you can reduce the number of decimal by going yeah. uh, it is just so, for 2021, same thing. So if we have done this for 2020, it will be very easy for us to do for 2021. Just have to reference 
what you have done for 2020 by putting dollar sign then dollar sign. Do the same thing here. You can just press F4. See? Behind the D, you press F4 to reference. You press F4 to reference. So because you have referenced, then you can just drag them. Drag down. Drag down. Yeah. So the total to drag down. All right. So you see, now we have our assumptions for revenue. Average growth rates. So we have it here. Can double click. So based on these assumptions, we already know our revenue. So you come to your income statement, then of course, sorry. All right. So you can just bring this. So the 2020, this multiply by this. 2021, this multiplied by this, 2022, this multiplied by this, 2023, this multiplied by this, 2024, This was by by this. Then twenty twenty five. This was by by this. So I'm put a comma. Now we have our revenue. Our VAT is. So we know that our VAT is 7.5 percent percent. So we can just come to our income statement. We know our VAT is usually negative, so minus revenue times our VAT. So you can also reference your VAT. Remember, reference is F4, or put dollar sign before B and after B. You press the enter and you can drag down to 2025. Then of course the total you can also drag down. So you have to add your revenue plus your VAT. So you can either use sum and this or you just press Alt equals to alt plus equals to sorry alt plus equals to or well, using alt plus equals to is when I select 2020 so select this then you drag down yeah so now we are back to cost of sales so our cost of sales let's look at the trend of course, our cost of sales is usually a function of revenue. So we can check the trend, cost of sales. So based on my business model, my cost of sales is usually 60%. How do I know? You can equals to, come to your equal statement, then your cost of sales as a function of revenue. That's this divided by this. See, 60%. We will try it for 2017 too. In the same thing. So this, right by this. So it's a flat rate. I love to work in percentages. No stress. Then I say my cost of sales is 60% of revenue. So 60% of revenue. So I come back here. 
Then my cost of sales is also a negative. My revenue times cost of sales. There we go. So, so we drag down. Remember, to reference. So, we have gotten our cost of sales, then of course our gross profit is our revenue minus cost of sales. But here we have to sum it equals to this plus this. We have our revenue. When you drag them. Right? Then we can calculate our gross profit margin. For you to calculate your gross profit margin is your gross profit over sales in percentage. So instead of you recalculating, you can just drag down because we already have the formula here already. So you can drag down. So I'm sure this should be 35% too. Maybe because of the uh, decimal. So let's move to our depreciation. All right, so our depreciation, I've already created my PPE schedule. We're building from scratch. So in 2017, I already have assets worth 37 million and in 2018, assets worth 800,000. So it, uh, my depreciation is 10% here. So I already have my depreciation for 2018. That's 10% of 37 million and 10% of 800,000 will give me 3.7. But of course, based on our PPE schedule, we have to break it down into motor vehicle, furniture and fitting, then building. So with this, I, I have my depreciation for 2017 as 3.7. It's different in 2018 because of the additional asset. Yeah. So, then we go back to our income statement and we just bring our depreciation. Remember, depreciation is also negative because I did negative here. So, we don't have to put negative sign again. Yeah. So, I'll tell you why it's better we import from here and not type. I'll tell you because the reason is because we might need to change our reputation anytime so we don't make any adjustment on the output even if you adjust anything you don't adjust directly to, on your output you adjust based on your input or your assumptions so that's why nothing is typed on this output. It's as a result of our processing. We have been doing some, all, all these assumptions are our processing. So everything that is coming to this output is based on our processing, or what we have processed. So we're not typing anything, we're always importing from another sheet. Oh, well, here's this, 23, I guess. Then this is 24. Twenty-four, then twenty-five. All right. So, in case if we need to review our PPE to maybe fifteen percent or whatever it is, let's assume we want to review it to fifteen percent. See, fifteen percent, fifteen percent. You see the depreciation has changed. So if you go to your income statement, the depreciation has also changed. So that is the purpose of this. All 
all right so we're done with our depreciation our operating expenses to my operating expenses to is as a result of revenue I know that logistics and other operating expenses, printing, stationaries, everything is 15% of our total revenue in a year. Once it's exceeding 15%, then it is becoming too much. So I have my 15% here, max of 15% operating expenses. That's 15%. So I can come to my income statement, then uh, equals to my revenue, multiply by assumption here. Excuse me. Don't forget to reference. So for you to reference, you know it is F4 your dollar sign. Then you drag. The total operating expenses plus depreciation, then sum equals to. So you see, our operating expenses should be in negative. So negative, negative. Should be in negative. So of course. It's supposed to be negative. So you drag down. No, sorry. So this is going to be negative. We have to uh, drag again. Then this is equal to sum. So bracket this. So this is my total operating expenses. Got this. Then my earning before interest and tax will be this. We gross profit plus total operating expenses. So like this. I don't have any finance cost. This is a basic financial model. If I if I'm adding finance cost, then we begin to calculate for interest rates and all of that. We can have a different training on the complex financial modeling, if time permits. Then any before tax, of course, your any before tax. You see the same thing, because we have no finance cost. You see the same thing as this. So it's just. Like this minus this because your tax or plus this because this because our finance cost is also an expenses. So it have been a negative here in brackets. So when you add it together, you still get the same thing. Yeah. Then of course our tax is 30%. Our income tax, our company tax. Is 30%. So you come here, the tax is 30% of your earnings before tax. Because you're putting your and you drag down. The net profit. Of course, it should be negative, please. Negative. So you can drag down again because your net profit equals to this plus this. Uh, sorry. So drag down to. Was oh. my tax should be just to be sure what I did because of this times uh, okay. 
sorry minus this just to be double sure i'm not doing the wrong calculation yeah then drag down okay reference f4 okay drag down so the reason it's bringing this is because These are these are historical costs. So yeah. All right. So this is our net profit. Now our net profit margin is a function of net profit over revenue. So instead, you can just track to. So of course again, approximation. So here is it, we have made our modeling for income statements. So then I call it, you can now start to add your border, then you add your top border here, add another top border here, and another top border here. All right, another top border, double border here. Top and double border here. Yep. So usually our assumptions should be in blue. In blue. You can choose the blue you want to use. Just use this, then let everything be on white. So, this is it. So, in the next video, the next thing we'll be doing now is our financial position. So, moving to our financial position, uh, sorry. So, we pick this. From our PPE from 2020, see it? Then um, 2021, 2022. You might be wondering why can't we drag down? Because there's no particular sequence. So Excel doesn't know the sequence to so follow, it wants to drag down. So, too bad. We're going to do this manually. Then, uh, good. Great. Good. So, our bank, we can also use our growth rate or trend analysis for bank. So, our assumptions can just be let's just do a quick walk in here. So no, our okay. Let's just do our assumption for bank here. Bank growth. Yeah. Twenty eighteen. Twenty nineteen. Then average growth. Average growth. So for twenty eighteen, you can do this. This, whatever this, into bracket, into bracket, minus one, and I uh, equals the same thing here. Uh, financial position, because of this, because of this, shit, sorry, equals to. This minus this. Uh, this is the same thing as your trend analysis formula old minus new over old. So your summation or new to sum is the average of the both of them. Because average. 
of this. So, an idea of what, so average of so we can reduce this. So then we know that our financial position will always increase by so this multiply by this okay. All right, so dollar sign, you can drag. The reason why we are using this trend analysis is so we don't over, overstate our revenue. I could have, I could have seen a simple trend there. Now this is 10 plus 20, 30, 30 plus 20, 50, 50 plus 20. But we shouldn't overstate, let's just follow using our normal accounting formula. So this is the total. I don't think this is necessary. This is not necessary here. Move it. So this is not necessary. Yeah. So our total asset is equals to this plus this. Right. So we got this. You can just drag. Then you drag. Of course, your equity. Yeah, so drag down your retained earning is a function of your revenue, your income statement, net profit. So from 2020, you drag down to we don't have any liability, you can easily drag down. We don't have any current to use it around. If we are building a complex model, then we can start considering liabilities. Then our total equity, we have this. So, like I said, yeah, you might be looking at our equity. I just did a minus and plus to make it balance. Because this is not a real financial statement. This is not happening. This is just imaginary. So I just created something for this practical class. So let's make it beautiful. So you you notice that I use Format Painter. Format Painter is just, I want the same format for the rest. So I just take it, then I format it to the rest. You see? Yeah, so... Remember, our assumption is always in blue and make it white. So we are done with our financial position. So you see really that the, the idea of financial modeling is your assumptions. You just want to be clear on your assumptions. And these are our assumptions here. We already have assumptions that this is our growth rate for, for bank. This is... Uh, these are trend analysis, of course. We can keep this for people for in case you don't know how you arrive at 1.3 growth rate. Then our tax is 30% flat, operating expenses 15% flat, cost of goods 50% flat, value added tax 7.5% flat. Then remember, we did our growth rate based on uh, based on our level our information that we have here. All these are assumptions too. So we can take this as our assumptions too. 
yeah so they can be blue and um, all these two are just our assumptions you can make them blue too all right so let's quickly do cash flow then we'll move to validation and protection of data all right so our cash flow statement our net income we already have that on our income statement so you pick it and you drag down for our ppe of course we're adding back so you put your negative sign because pp is already negative so minus times minus cost of plus take this same thing 2021 now 2022 now yeah no let's do that This, then our total you can just drag down because is this song you can check so it's not correct can you see so we have to make it like this because it's on to bracket everything there so you drag down now that makes it correct. There's nothing here, so nothing, of course. So we can just copy and paste within binary assets. So it's just very easy like that. Your cash flow statement is based on what you have done in your income statement and your financial position. So opening cash equivalent. Now this is it. Yeah. So our opening cash will be our closing balance here. Then this will be our net inflow with this. All right. It's just this over here. Now closing closing cash equivalent um, is equals to this plus this yeah so we can continue like this like this so you'll be able to drag down the only thing you can drag down is this yeah and um, of course you can now drag this And of course, you can outdraw this. Yeah. So this is it. We're done with our cash and cash equivalents and so on and so forth. So this is just an imaginary uh, financial modeling. So I just developed all these figures for the purpose of this tutorial. Right? So in our PPE, of course, you can do PPE. There's no much formula, it's just you calculating your PPE, your depreciation is just equals to cost times this, and you get it. All right, round off. We can just um, make everything consistent, you know. Consistent, 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 of course. And uh, I have this also consistent. So it's so light. Yeah. So let's go back to our assumptions. So we are good. So this is basically how you can, with this knowledge, you can think broader and build a financial model you can think broader and 
build a financial model based on this little knowledge. So, what we can do now is we need to protect our sheet. We need to protect our data. But before that, okay, let's just go ahead to protect our data. So you can assume that your growth rates should not exceed a certain percentage. No matter how you want to play with it, it should not assume or it should not be, it should not exceed a certain percentage. So, like I said, let me just reiterate. Your assumptions is depending on you, but you must be able to justify your assumptions. You don't have to do all the old growth rate and everything, but you have to justify your assumptions professionally. So that's what I'm saying. So I can come here because I feel that this can still go higher, we can still do better. But however, so I don't overstate my revenue, this average growth rate should not exceed 35% percent or 0 0.25 so let's be consistent with all this it does not have percentage national percentage 0 0.075 so zero point three. so let's be consistent no percentage no percentage So zero point three. So and, and, so 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 I can come here for me to do that. Then I'll go to my data and do a data validation. I can now say this can be from zero, but must not exceed. 0.35. If it exceeds 0.35, show out an error message and tell them this let's say average growth rate cannot exceed 35%. Then alert error stop. Then you can say one. Oh. Error again. Average growth rate is above thirty five percent. Okay. So if I come here and I want to do like this at six, oh, it's above thirty five percent. Sorry, it's an error. So same thing here too. Because I highlighted everything before I do that. 0 0.35 is accepted for 0 0.36. No way. So we can do that for these two. Your tax, well, you can leave your tax, you can play around it. Why for your cost of goods sold? Well, it can be 0 0.60. But cost of goods sold should not exceed 0 0.80. Because if your cost of goods sold exceeds 0 0.80, then of course your gross profit margin will be very low. So whatever would make your cost of goods sold exceed 80%, then you're not making profit the way you want. So it has to be, it should not exceed 80%. So we can also do that again. Data validation. Yeah, minimum zero, maximum zero point eighty. So, input message warning. Let's so say cost of cost of sales or cost of goods sold cannot. Exceed eighty percent. Then error. Stop. So I'll show you something now. Maybe for our operating expenses, let's say error. Cost of sales or 
cos of root 2 is above 80%. Yep. For this. So you can't. You can do that for operating expenses. So your operating expenses, you can play around it too. You can say decimal, zero, maximum, 0 0.20. Same thing, OPR, uh, A1, or error, and the consistent, OPR cannot exceed 20%. Yeah, you can see your, your, now look at this, your error alert, you can just say warning. When you put warning, I will tell you the difference between warning. So you can put your warning. Error message. Kindly. Anything above 20% is not feasible. Yeah. So we got this. So you see how we can still change it. Anything above twenty percent is not feasible. Do you want to continue? Yes, I didn't say she stop it. So you can continue. See that? And of course, your tax you can just leave it because it's statutory. So um, if you feel you don't want anybody. So you can just leave your assumptions because you can change it from time to time. You can leave it for your output. You have to protect your output. How do you protect your output? Well, before doing that, I'll teach you something. You can view free span. Then you can freeze first colon. When you freeze freeze first colon, so you see it. This is still going to remain your VAT. You can still see all your inputs, VAT, total revenue, cost of sales. All those inputs are still there, so it's not changing, right? Yeah, you can see see them. So you can protect this sheet by clicking on the protect button or review. So you see, there's a difference between protect sheet and pro protect workbook. For you, when you protect your sheet, you put a password. I put my password. Okay, you have to confirm your password. Ensure that you remember your password. If not, you won't be able to recover this. So, because I protected my sheets, I can't change anything. This is my output. Nobody should work on this output. But everything I'm doing on my output should be informed by what I've done here. So, you can also protect workbook. Protecting workbook is simply nobody can delete or add anything to this workbook. You can't delete, you can't insert additional space. See, everything is not responding. And you cannot delete it. You see? So we can do that for everything. Uh, view, free span, free first colon. Then you protect your sheets. Under review, protect sheets. Put your password. Hope you can see my password. All right. And protect my book too. Same thing here. All these are my outputs. So view. You don't need to highlight. Just free span. First column. This is okay. Then review. Protect sheet. Your password. Password. Yeah. Protect sheet, password. So, we got it. Do you have, uh, so financial model is nothing more than this. Aside from organization, I have complex information 
For example, your receivables, payables, loan, the, um, and other long-term liabilities. In doing that, you have you have to consider using your uh, your your amortization schedule for repayment of interest, which you can also do on Excel. And you have to also consider using um, um, net book value NPVs in case your your organization is into capital investment and all those things. So you can you you might need to incorporate that into your model based on the complexity of your organization. So this is just to push you to understanding financial modeling basics. It's nothing difficult. All you need is your assumptions, clarity, and all of that. So I'll remind you, as, we, as I round off, the hallmark of good financial modeling. Clarity of business problem. Think about all inputs and outputs. Plan your model structure. Protect the integrity of data. Then you can consider using test data. Thank you very much. Should you have any question, please drop your question. I'll be happy to answer them.